Oh, hey there, did you see you here? Are you excited about React Native and you want to know what happened at Up.js? Well, good news, because today I'm gonna recap everything that was announced there and also why I'm so bullish on React Native's future. So let's grab a seat through this door, no, through this door, and I'll tell you everything. I'd like to start with talking a little bit about the general trends in the mobile industry and why I really do believe that now if you're just getting started with mobile development it's a very good time to be in and there will be a lot of opportunities to come in mobile development industry. So first of all in 2022 the time spent on mobile was way more than on web it was if i'm not mistaken 60 to 30 percent ratio and they just put into perspective how much time and users are spending on mobile and at the same time we see way more web developers than mobile developers so this opens up opportunities for mobile developers at the same time due to economic reasons recently companies are struggling and they're looking for ways to achieve the same or even achieve more by investing less resources and being more optimal with their resources that means that if in past they were able to to invest in an iOS and an Android and a separate web development team. Nowadays, we're looking at ways of either how to cut some of these parts or how to merge them together in order to be more efficient and to build once and run basically everywhere. So again, this opens up the opportunity for full stack developers and also cross-platform developers, especially if you're using Expo and you're building for both web and mobile, including Android, iOS, and other platforms as well it's a great opportunity for you going into the future a very good example of an application that managed to accomplish something that maybe was unheard of in the past like i don't know five years or not possible is the blue sky application which is probably one of the most talked about application nowadays which is kind of a twitter but decentralized and the application was built actually by one developer in six months and it is available both on web and mobile ios and android so that's possible because of technologies like expo and yeah like it's impressive what one developer with the right tools can achieve the truth is that the gap between web and mobile is getting smaller and smaller and there are a lot of companies that are pushing the boundaries and making sure that this gap is actually getting smaller and web developers are able to build mobile application at the same time mobile developers can build universal application on web and mobile. So the topic or the whole idea behind this year's Up.js conference that I saw was that there is no more web or mobile, it's rather web and mobile. And this is for good reasons. Like I've been thinking about the way we are using application in the past years and it's really a very fine line between mobile and web like think about when you're receiving links for TikTok videos. At the beginning, you receive them and you don't have um, the application installed and you just open it and it opens in a web browser. That's super convenient because you don't have to install an application just to look at some content. Then after you receive these links a couple of times, you decide to check out the application. And the cool part is that in the web application, you see a pop-up install application, which you can press and it automatically installs the application on your device then if you have application installed on your device and then you receive it the same url the device will understand that hey like we don't have to open it in browser you have application it will automatically open the application and will redirect you to the specific screen of the content that you are looking for or in some other cases if you are browsing the web and press the application you will see a pop-up at the bottom of the screen like do you want to continue on web or do you want to switch to mobile application in the next part Part, we're gonna see how this is going to be achievable by anyone using Expo and Expo Router and I think this will open up the doors for small and indie developers to take the benefits of both mobile applications which are faster and more performant they provide a more immersive experience and web applications that are way more discoverable and which users can easily open up for the first time without having to commit a lot without having to download any 
anything. In the past, this web and mobile interoperability was available only to big companies that were able to invest resources into this. But more recently, including with the announcement of Expert Alter V1 a couple of months ago, this became more possible for indie developers, for small developers, or for smaller teams to accomplish the same. So in a couple of words, Expert Alter is the first file-based navigation system that works based on links, very similar to how routing works on the web. And also it supports some cool features like automatic deep linking, and that enables this possibility to link specifically to the screens and to the content that you want in the application. So at the Amdojazz conference, Avon Bacon from Expo announced Expo Router V2, which is going to come in Expo SDK 49 somewhere in June. And there are a lot of new cool features coming in Explorator v2 and let's go through some of them and see what to expect there. The first one is auto-typed routes. That's a big win. That means that from now on in Expert Router v2, your editor will auto-complete and auto-suggest you the routes whenever you are gonna try to navigate to some screens. This is powerful, especially if you're coming from React Navigation, where typing your screens and routes was a pain. Like that was one of the most <laughs> challenging part and the code looked ugly and it was very confusing, but now everything is going to be automatically taken care for us and we just have to define files and everything else is taken care of by Expo Router. Also, we're gonna get rid of the spaghetti imports where we had to go back a lot of screens whenever we had to import some components inside our screens and this is done thanks to the alias imports that are coming into the metro and yeah that's probably something that you'd expect to be there but it was not for me personally it was weird how everyone was so excited about this feature this alias imports and the flex gap was the two features that everyone almost stood up and everyone was clapping about and i was thinking like they're quite small yes they're very nice they're super important but at the point like you'd expect them to be there. Good thing is that we're gonna have it and it's not going to be only in Expo Router. Like going forward in Metro, we're gonna be able to do alias imports to make sure we have better looking and easier to manage imports. Speaking about web and Expo Router, the big changes and big things that are coming to Expo Router v2 are the static web generation. So from now on, we're gonna be able to generate our web pages from Expo Router to static files, which are HTML, CSS, JavaScript at build time and then these files like it's a set of files that we can take and put on any web server and serve them to the world that's powerful if you have some experience with next.js that's what they are doing with react applications but now we're going to be able to do the same with react native applications specifically targeting web and it's powerful because it enables way better seo because seo can crawl these static generated pages and can in index them and suggest them in search results. To power these static routes, Expo will introduce a new component head and that will allow us to customize and adjust the properties, the meta parameters of our page. If you're targeting web before building web applications in React Native, which probably you should and probably we're gonna do that on the channel very soon because we don't cover a lot of web tutorials on the channel. But yeah, if you are one of these people, then you're going to be excited about the next one. In the next versions of React Native Metro Expo, you're going to be able to write CSS to style your web applications in React Native and Expo web. So yes, that's right. Finally, we're going to be able to use Tailwind in React Native as well. And if you've been waiting for that, now is the time to dive into it. I'm super excited to dive deep into all of these features in the next live stream that we're gonna do. But if you're interested, I will leave in the description some links to the announcement and also the video that we're during the Abdo.js conference. Change location. When we talk about running React Native cross-platform, we usually assume Android, iOS, and web. But what about Windows and macOS? Maybe some IoT devices? I don't know. There is actually also Linux there. Can we run React Native on Linux? 
Well, yes, we can run React Native on all of these platforms. At Web.js conference, SAD from Microsoft announced the release of React Native for macOS, and it's also available for Windows. And Microsoft has actually forked the React Native repository and made it compatible to run on macOS. And this allows Microsoft to implement a lot of features in their Microsoft Office and also Microsoft Excel applications in React Native. I think that's very powerful to know that companies of these sizes are leveraging React Native to build features in applications that are core to their business and not just some MVPs. A fun fact is that from big applications using React Native on desktop, the desktop version of the Messenger from Facebook or Meta is fully written in React Native for macOS, and that's really powerful. What I liked about the presentation is that it showed also how how you can build menu bar applications in React Native. I could never think that that would actually be possible. You can even build something like the Spotlight of macOS that you're trying to search something. At this point, I really don't know what is not possible with React Native. On the other note, Kudo Chen also showed us how we can run React Native applications on Linux systems, and that allowed him to run a React Native application on a Raspberry Pi device. I also know that React Native is being used somewhere in the PlayStation application and in a lot of other places. Let me know, like, I'm really curious where else is React Native used where we do not expect other than iOS, Android, and web? Because I really think that at this point, it probably is also in space. I don't know if SpaceX is using React Native or not, but that would be really fun to, um, to know. Okay, but what about the new architecture? So previous year at Jazz, I think everyone is talking about the new architecture. And I was looking forward to see how the adoption in the community will be for this one, especially because one of the main problems of adopting the new architecture in your application was the requirement of every dependency, every package, and every native module that your application was using to be migrated to the new architecture. So it was a situation where it's all or nothing. So it's either everything was migrated or probably nothing. I really don't know uh, exact numbers of how everything is going with the new architecture, but the good news that I found out during this conference is is that in the React Native version 73, the next version, they will add the possibility for applications to move to the new architecture, even if not all the dependencies are moved to the new architecture. So that will enable a lot more application to adopt the new architecture. And it will be a super simple, like you're only gonna have to define which native module are not yet migrated, and then you can run new architecture in your application. In a couple of words, the new architecture is the new, yeah, like the new architecture of how React Native sends data between the JavaScript side and the native side. So the older architecture, the way it's working is that there is a bridge between the JavaScript side and the native side, and all the data that is communicating between these two sides was serialized. And this serialization of data was a very expensive process, and that's why the communication between these two sides were asynchronous. Now with the new architecture, the communication between the two sides became synchronous, and there is no more bridge, and there is no more serialization, deserialization, and that would mean that the application will perform way better and also will provide us this synchronous communication between the JavaScript and the native side. So these were the most important things that I wanted to share with you in this video. There are so many more features and new updates and new tools, technologies, libraries that I really want to dive into and create separate tutorials, but I'm going to keep them for future. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to stay up to date with everything that is happening in the React Native world, make sure to subscribe to our newsletter because we are sending there every two weeks, one value packed newsletter with updates, with things, with more educational content that you definitely don't want to miss. Thank you very much to Abdujas and Expo for organizing this amazing conference. And I was 
happy to be one of the sponsors of UpDigest this year because I enjoyed it so much previous one. And this year I decided, yeah, let's sponsor it because these are our people, the React Native developers, and it was really great to see and meet everyone there. On that note, something very exciting from our community that I had to experience there was in the first day, two founders of an application that was started during the Not Just Hackathon back in autumn, approached me and showed me their application. They said that they are still working on the application. And that's something that I was so proud and I was so excited to see the result of our community and the success of everything that you guys are building out there. And yes, let's, um, let's continue. Let's see where else and what other applications we can build together as a community. That's it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. And let me know in the comments down below what are you most excited about what's coming next in React Native Expo, Expo Router, and so on. And I will take that into consideration when prioritizing next tutorials. So see you in the comments and see you soon in the live streams. Bye guys. How stupid is this idea? Tell me.